Jackie Cash and Lori Kilmartin. Both, you're you're at home. I'm afraid to speak. As soon as we start speaking, we have to restart Riverside. So, you know, which is bad for a podcast because it's all, basically all speaking. Is, well, is the content. It worked out this time. Hmm, we'll see. I am home. <laughs> Uh, I was in, uh, I was in, uh, oh, and it's Monday. It's nice to not slam these down on a Sunday, you know? True. Uh, I am in, uh, I was at Stir Crazy. It was a lot of fun. Um, I'm, I'm starting to become a little clip machine. I've decided that's my job. So I, like, it takes me, okay, so I record the whole show, right? I have an out, basically 50 minutes to an hour. And I just take out all the jokes and I start to try to stream, you know, either pull little clips of audience stuff or stream it together. Cause sometimes I call it back or re-involve everybody. And <laughs> it takes hours, hours. <laughs> it takes about an hour yeah. and a half just to pull selects, to pull clips from an hour long show. And okay. then to go back and go, all right, is this worth keeping? And you do it over and over and over and over until it's tight, but not so tight that it doesn't make sense. And then uh, put them, I put the long ones on YouTube, you know, six, eight minutes. Some people are watching okay. to the very end. And then That's I take awesome. what, anything I can pull out, I make a short. So like I have one, I just did the Friday late show. I have four shows to do. And, um, so the Friday late gave me a, like a, a four or five minute long one for YouTube and then two, uh, shorts and two little 60, 60 second ones that I put up on all the fucking video potential, uh, you know, places to look, to stream. And it's, it's so much work. And I used to think when I, when you would hear how much these social media people are costing, I'm like, what the fuck? But it really if they if they're as thorough as that that that's a lot of hours it is right it's a lot of work and you quite honestly i've shown three different people in my family your clips this weekend oh really so yeah that's how <laughs> oh, that's nice. how much you're nailing it that's i mean i showed them to my dad i showed them to my sister-in-law <laughs> my sister-in-law enjoyed the uh father of girls and oh. uh, having a daughter yes Oh the oh the jokes. Who fucking cares about those? I'll cl- no, no. clip those out too. But, right, you clip those out too. But it was uh, and I and I thoroughly enjoyed all of <laughs> your crowd work you. is ridiculous because you're so in the moment that you're like, oh my god, all right. The ra- the radio one from Michigan. Oh, with you, the last yelling- two people. Yes. <laughs> I, as soon as like multiple people started shouting penis, I was like, this sounds like, and I, and was confirmed a morning radio stunt, a, a lower level Baba Booey by, (laughs) you know, by created by dinosaurs who no longer work are being mined for oil now because of the entire industry has collapsed. They're diamonds. You don't know it. You don't know. They turned into diamonds. That's how. That's the pressure that's created them. Um, Maria and I drove from. Well, we didn't drive. Flew to Fargo. There was a. There. I had some. Again, I had a hotel drama. Is what I had. Um, yeah. The flight just kept getting pushed, and luckily we were going in the day before, right? So yeah. this is Thursday, I believe. Thursday, we end up getting to Fargo, North Dakota around midnight, hotel 1230. Marie gets her hotel, goes upstairs. I get my hotel. I go upstairs. There's someone in my room. What? (laughs) Yeah. At one o'clock in the morning. No. Terrifying because this guy had amazing reflexes. He literally hit me with a pillow. (gasps) If he would have had a gun, I would be a dead person. (laughs) What the fuck? Right, he just he he just he Yeah. It was not good. Yeah, he literally screamed and whipped a pillow. Perfect aim. It went right in between the opening of the door. And uh Yeah, and then I was like and I yelled, I'm so sorry, and I closed the door. And then I go downstairs and I'm like, 
For some reason, men don't use the latch, probably because they're all soldiers and they're going to kill us. <laughs> they know uh, they have access to pillows. That's why they're overconfident. Yeah. Really. It's overconfidence because I always use the latch of the deadbolt, of and if there's a connecting door, I always put a bag in front of it. Like, oh I, my god! I, and I don't, even, I don't even think about it, right? Yeah, yeah. I just do it because I'm alive to this day because I do it. Probably. <laughs> yes. Anyway, um. So then, what happened? Oh, so I go downstairs, and the woman who checked me in, I said, "I'm going to need a different room," <laughs> and. She was like, it says that it's empty. It says that it's clean. And I'm like, well, it isn't. Uh, uh, and when you get me a new room, I would like you to come up with me. And uh, because yes. if this guy is really mad, I want you to leave that guy to deal with him. And I don't want you to yeah. have to deal with him. And they both look at each other oh, and shrug. Nice. And okay. so she gets me the room and she's like, this is the presidential suite. And I was like, that's great. Allow me to use my words. I want you to come up with me, not him, you. And she goes, okay, okay. And uh, I said, I just prefer clarity's sake. And uh, so she takes me up. She keeps telling me it's the presidential suite. As Maria said the next day, it's so great that Biden wasn't in town. <laughs> and I go in and it's not, um, it's just two rooms, you know. Mm -hmm. sometimes right. there's a room with a fold-out couch that's what it was and right. um and so there was also a weird rain shower instead of a bathtub where and i tried to make a video for andy but i didn't want to make it nude so i got soaking wet <laughs> just two two showers that come down and then four showers that go right and left oh so, so is this a place you want to bring andy to Perhaps one day to, to, so that we can both be showered upon. I don't know that I could guarantee getting the presidential suite again. Um, <laughs> I'm, yeah. that is appalling. And so did you see the guy at the rest of the time there or did, were you on the same floor as him? No, they moved me to the 13th floor, lucky 13. And um, <laughs> it gave me a view of downtown Fargo. You can go to my Instagram and look at the hotel art if you'd like. Okay. Okay. Um, Fargo, by the way, has a restaurant that was so good that I did my third ever Yelp review. Oh, all right. <laughs> like I can count on yeah. one hand how many times I've cared. And mm -hmm. uh, it's called Burnbaums, and she was nominated for a James Beard Award last year. Wow. And let me tell you something. A lot of people could do good work with brisket and meat and whatever. Uh, it takes a real freaking genius to nail sauerkraut. I was like, I couldn't, and I'm from Wisconsin, so I've had a lot of sauerkraut in my life. <laughs> and right. so I was like, I took a bite of it. I looked at the sandwich. I took another bite of it. I got up and I walked and talked to the people. And I said, this is amazing. <laughs> this is an amazing sandwich. Well, um, I, I would say it's brave of you to order a sauerkraut sandwich. That that's the first acknowledgement I'd like to make in this entire well, interaction. If you're in in the Dakotas, you can order all kinds of weird European and Eastern European foods and probably be bright. Like here in Milwaukee, you're going to want to get a Polish sausage if they offer it to you. You just are, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean, you can also I've do had them at. I've had them at Trader Joe's, so I think I know what they taste like. <laughs> uh, the, uh, um, yeah, so we had, um, so that was that show. I that also the show. ordered, the show was, that was so great. It was a beautiful room. Wow. Um, they, they actually charged me a percentage of merch sales. Um, they charged you how much? What did they take? 20%. 20%. Isn't that, what the fuck? They do that. I wouldn't theaters. have done it. Yeah. I wouldn't have done it if it would have been not a Maria Bamford show because I sold almost all of my merch because she doesn't sell wow. merch. So, and, right. So, yeah. um, do they do all, like, you don't do any of it. Did you stand up oh, there no. and sign stuff or? No, I had to, nice. I had sold it. Yeah. Oh, you, I had oh, to sell, they just yeah. take, they take, they're like renting you a stall for 20%. Yes. 
Yes. And who's counting the 20%? Is that, is that you me. telling them how much you, okay. And then yeah, is it 20% off the about top it. or is yeah, it 20%? Gross. Which one's gross? That's the top. Off the, so, ba- so you only kept 30% basically of profit of, yeah. I mean, at least it, it should be 20% off of your, the other, the, the net. opposite of gross. Yeah, the cost. Thank you. Yes. Net. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would have liked, that would have been nice. Um, nobody was checking. I chose not to lie. I deserve a parade. <laughs> uh, I would write down the words chose not to lie. <laughs> so if I had a pen and paper, um, I also, yeah, so I, yeah, I've, I've also thought about, um, you know how in Patreon, if you're the $10 or more level you get a free sticker mm-hmm. every month and you get them in three month batches. Um, I've been trying to figure out how to, cause sometimes they can cost so much to do them. So I have been going to sticker mule. They make a deal. It's 50 for, for 20, $19. They often have a deal. And so I got um, temporary tattoos with the, with, with the kills like a guy knife I, mic logo oh i saw you did upload a photograph of your <laughs> ass to the women's chat which was the most obscene thing since i uploaded a video of the guy jerking off on jet blue <laughs> i regret it so hard i regret <laughs> asking andy to take the picture he was like <laughs> I said, I, I, he said, you should definitely put it where you would put a tramp stamp. And so he put it on and then I was like, well, take a picture of it. And then I saw quite honestly, how big my fucking ass is. And, uh, <laughs> and then I was like, there's no way I'm putting this on Instagram. <laughs> I love it. I didn't know you could get temporary tattoos at sticker mule. That's interesting. That might be a fun thing to sell. Yeah, some uh right, especially if they're having a deal. And um so next next three months, you're gonna get like there's gonna be a random choice of awesome stickers from <laughs> the various tags from this show. So feel free to bump yourself up to the ten dollar uh Patreon level. And uh we're probably next month we're gonna tell you to bump yourself up to something to get a free uh awesome pin or something from Max Fun. But if you right. have enough money to uh to donate to the show, please do. Because In general, uh bump it costs money. To, yes. Yeah, be I we we appreciate it so much. You're great to listen. And now that it's on Wednesday, we have enough time that I could uh do a real clock eater and and ask you to do that. Anyway. And then the ne- so the next day we went from Fargo to Duluth. Mm-hmm. And the people who it's a 5 hour drive, 4 4 or 5 hour Ooh. drive. All right. And clear and cold, perfectly fine, 25 degrees. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um but they had a uh they had one of their their assistants drive us. We Is didn't that have to drive. Bad? So who who the Duluth gig or the Fargo gig? The Fargo gig. It was the same production company. So they had this young oh. woman named Sophie. Okay. Who was amazing and super nice. And that's good. I mean, five hours in a car, it's uh, that's hit or miss. Sounds like it was right. a hit. Let's yeah, it was a hit. Um let's say that it it wasn't uh I I knew I wasn't, I mean, there are some people I don't want to ride in a car with for four or five hours. Actually, there's, I, on, on many hands, I could explain plenty of yes. people uh, that feet, I don't. Feet. Yeah. Oh, and there's a, there's a booker out of upstate Minnesota who's got to be in his eighties by now, but, uh, he was, a he was a low back guy. He was a guy who would touch your low back, uh, elbow squeeze, ah, but bit of that I guy. I remember those. Yeah. And uh, he uh, he texted both Maria and I to say, "Hey, you're in the area. <laughs> say hi." I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. He uh, he was he was mad. I once did a gig with him, uh, for him with Darlene Westcore, and yeah. I, I and I wanted Darlene to come, and she said, "I will come, if you are completely the interaction with this guy." 
<laughs> I do not have to talk to this guy at any time. And it was a like a four day run. And by the third day, she literally came up to me and said, all right, I'll take over. <laughs> That's a real friend. That's, it really is. She, it. She saw your need and was like, how can I help? Bingo. Is That's she, exactly she, what she saw. Where is Darlene now? Is she in Vegas or am I confusing her with somebody else? You're confusing her with someone else who died. Peg Bauer. Um, no, or I Kathleen, would. Kathleen, what's her last name? I forget her last name. Not Madigan. Okay. Kathleen, Not Madigan, obviously, uh, but yeah. Um, uh, I think she's a, yeah, fuck. Well, whatever. I think she's in Vegas. So Darlene's in Minneapolis. Right. She just got remarried. And nice. I don't know if she's doing stand up anymore, but uh, she won the first season of Nickelodeon's Funniest Mom. I remember because I wrote on the second season. And um, this, by the way, that show is called The Search for America's Funniest Mom Season 2. Like season two was because <laughs> not to be confused with season one where we already got Darlene. Um, yeah. And then she was like, they were like, Darlene, Darlene, she won. And then, you know, they always like promise. I think she did a pilot, right? I'm sure she did a pilot, right? But yes, then yes. where does it she go? Did, and then they didn't, it didn't go anywhere. It was very, it was right. disappointing, but she got, you know, many free chicken Caesar salads and a couple of weeks yes. for free. And, She's in LA in a nice too. hotel. Like, Super like that funny. Is someone had you had someone actually, you know, they could if they could have figured have existed out in a pilot. Yes, she had, she has funny timing and a funny story and stuff like that. That if, if, if they would have literally, if like if they would have thought, like, yeah, if you'd have just done it, 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 this person is here for you. They packaged themselves. They did it all. Yeah, it's a Brett Butler. Reba McIntyre, like it could have been like that. Roseanne, which they probably yeah. thought too much Roseanne and not enough Brett Butler, I think. Because I right. think it, she would have been better. Hell, she could have been great as, remember Alice, Alice's Restaurant? What the heck was that? Alice, it was called. Yeah, I remember, remember Alice? Oh, Linda Lavin. Yeah. She's yeah. great. Yeah. She, yeah, it could have, she could have done that. Any number of things. So. Too funny. So we drive to Duluth and many mm -hmm. people who went to high school with Maria were at that show. Oh, um, wow. How's that? I've done that. I've done that. Yeah. It isn't. It's nerve wracking. Yeah. Because you don't know if they understand stand up comedy and exaggeration. Right. And you don't know if they are just thinking, well, she thinks she's somebody. <laughs> Right. Or, or, you know, your memories of your childhood are, they're not corroborated ever on stage. It's like, this is what I say right. happened. And so here we go. And mm -hmm. to have other people go, well, I don't know. I was there. I and was I there. remember it differently. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's unnerving as well, you know, and right. uh, aside from just the idea of like, Hey, I'm writing jokes. This isn't the truth, but also just that they would they would remember your childhood differently. They, if you think you're poor, maybe they thought you're a middle class, you know, or whatever. Right, right. I when I was my brother Russ tells this story about how because he was the manager of the football team, mm -hmm. and one homecoming, all of the the cheerleaders went and decorated each of the football players and the manager's rooms. Bedroom? And Russ came home and he was like. You let them into my room. <laughs> they now know what I, where I live and how I live. And he, we lived, he, his room was in an unheated attic in Wisconsin. Wow. And with like army blankets. <laughs> and he oh was God. like, he said that the cheerleaders felt so bad for him. He got, he was like, it was ridiculous. Their one was so, how? he was like, I didn't want your pity. I wanted to pretend that I had a regular life. <laughs> Jackie, did he have a space heater? How did he, how did he live? Cold, cold. Him and Scott shared this room and it was not a positive experience. Scott wow. was stoned all the time. So it was fine. Uh, he could have died of hypothermia though. 
and uh, <laughs> and Russ, I think Russ, I used to wear a hat to bed long time. Yeah. Now, I, sometimes I do that. I'll leave the the door open because it is good to have cold air, but it's a choice. Like I could close it and be toasty warm again. But I think it does right. help well, you and sleep soundly. My parents cool didn't air. believe that the, the my parents didn't believe that the heat didn't go up there. It was they an did. unfinished they, attic with a couple of particle board uh, rooms, and my brother Phil was in one room, and my brother Scott and Rust were in the other room, and there the, she didn't believe that the Nancy didn't believe the heat didn't go up there until we all moved out and they redid the upstairs, and she was like you know, the heater doesn't work up. It's like the, the vents don't work up there. Jackie. Yeah. First of all, I have to point out that Nancy is the good one, right? Right. right. Yeah. Nancy okay. was literally the best thing in the world, but clearly also made errors. Also, <laughs> but four, also she was four to 10 years of errors. <laughs> she was by marriage a Cation. And so uh, <laughs> <laughs> she missed some basic human needs like uh. work. Oh my God. Right? Like heat. And uh, <laughs> I should ask Russ what he did because I don't remember. It was a big joke that I used to wear a hat to bed. Yeah. Um, but it was, I don't remember how he he slept. I don't remember. I will ask him because I'm staying at his house. And he will, currently, right. by the way, enjoys it really cold. Really cold. Like it was, Ooh, it was so, I had to wear socks to bed last night. Yeah. I think you you either go you stay cold or you go super hot. But either way, you're going to cause discomfort to your loved ones, right? <laughs> right, right. Um, the only the only sleeping uh, thing I can contribute here is that my mom uh, taped her forehead at night um, so that she wouldn't oh. get wrinkles. You know, like like frownies. I use frownies now, but my mom did homemade and frownies are so cheap. I can't believe she didn't even you know. What are, what, spend a dollar seventy nine. They're it's like a frownies? little adhesive triangles that you can put like right here, like between your eyebrows. Okay. And it, it uh, allegedly it forces your muscles to relax when you sleep, so you will huh. get. Could I less could I put them on my jaw for TMJ? Would that work? No. Uh, okay. I don't know what you need to do for TMJ. Are you <laughs> grinding your teeth? Yeah. Oh. See. Well, I, I, Too much I info. can't see that you, you're not missing you showing anything. me your gums isn't evidence <laughs> that I can see that your teeth are growing. But thank you. <laughs> All right. It's uh, um, so then. Yeah. So yeah. then we do the Fargo show. Uh, we do the, the Duluth show. Mm -hmm. Duluth was fun, um, but it was so fast. And then Maria stayed to do a book signing at the local bookstore in Duluth. Um, and I came here to Milwaukee. Uh, my flight out of Duluth to Minneapolis, which is where all sh all things connect, out of Duluth, you have two choices. You can either leave at 5 a.m. or 3 p.m. Oh, my God. So you can either get to Milwaukee at noon or at 10 p.m. Oh, my God. So I chose 5 a.m. And then at midnight, when I got back to the hotel room, perfectly nice hotel room, by the way, not the presidential mm -hmm. suite. But uh, Duluth worked out. The but, but what you want the most in a hotel room, it was unoccupied. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And uh, but they they delayed my flight. Duluth uh, Delta did. They said, "Oh, your flight's been delayed till ten thirty in the morning." And so I got here yesterday at like two thirty. My, they're trying to take my dad's car away from him, but you. <clears throat> it's not and the and and i actually have a new bit about how that doesn't make any sense because they're doing it because they insist that he drives poorly i if anyone's ever driven in a car with my father for any time in the last 70 years he's 86 uh he has never driven well it's always oh. been terrifying so he always yeah. drove like an 86 year old but now he's 86 is what you're saying but now he's 86 yeah and uh so um but russ couldn't find him like russ went to pick him up his phone was uh, was messed up like he has this old flip phone mm -hmm. that for two weeks when i've been talking to him he's been like do you hear a ringing noise and i'm like no no i don't dad are you 86 i did not say that that would have been rude uh but then he wouldn't when i finally 
Well, right. And so, and he, he was also, he couldn't hear me. So there'd been some drama with his phone and then he drove himself to the church and whatever. So I finally find him back at his house. I pick up his flip phone. I was like, so what's going on with your phone? And I was like, hey, there's a soft ringing noise coming from your phone. <laughs> this will not. <laughs> and I was like, so I, I Googled it and they're like, oh, you got to go to US Cellular and get a patch. So Luckily, it was like 3.30 in the afternoon. We, it was Sunday. We took, I took him to U.S. Cellular. We cranked it. Uh, and so he called me today. He was like, yeah, I could hear you. I could hear the phone. There's no ringing noise. And I was like, because my brother Russ was so mad. And he was like, this is ridiculous. And I'm like, okay, don't be mad. And he was like, I'm not mad. It's a fact that I'm mad. I, I couldn't. Whatever it was, eventually. Jackie, he's still mad from being cold as a child. Like, <laughs> how you, you guys can't, you, you can't monitor Point his emotions taken. anymore. <laughs> Point taken. Point taken. He, ever since that thing with the, with the, with the cheerleaders where he's had to, he also, famously, the other thing my brother Russ did was he took all of the exchange students to prom each year and the school oh. would pay him to do it. What? Never heard of such a thing. What school district has these, <laughs> these sort of funds set aside? Well, he uh the thing about the Cation family is that they find they find money. We find yeah. money. He was you like, really I'll do. do it for a hundred dollars. And then you have to also pick up dinner. Oh my god. And then they did. Wow. Uh yeah. I'm impressed with your family. You guys always well, you guys were constantly... given some uh shaky circumstances and all all 12 of you have figured it out. <laughs> We've made lemonade. I was the, um, I was the editor of the school newspaper and I had a deal with the local movie theater where I could come and watch as many movies as I wanted, as long as I reviewed one. Did you ask for that? Yes. Wow. That's nice. And I got that. It was great. I actually reviewed Reds. Remember oh, Reds? Yeah. Warren, Warren Beatty. Beatty. Right. Was he playing John? Reed? And the uh, John something, a famous communist. Oh, right. Uh, well, and, and Emma Goldman and um, possibly John Reed. Uh, that, that sounds right, actually. Hey, today's President's Day. And I read an amazing thing about Abraham Lincoln. And for some reason, I want to tell it to you, even though I haven't let you talk for 27 minutes. <laughs> I think I know what you're saying because I, I think I read an amazing thing too. It might be the same story. Was it the one where he wasn't, everyone said he was never going to get reelected. Yeah. And so he did as a, uh, as a gesture of faith to his staff, he made them sign a memo before they opened it. Saying. In 1864. Yeah. Um, and the inside the memo, it said, Every no one thinks that I'm going to be reelected. If I am not reelected, you ha you have just agreed to support whoever is elected. Nice. Until inauguration day. Right. And you cannot you cannot sabotage them or thwart them because we have to keep this country together. And I was like, nice work, Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. You know what? What I mean, looking at us now, was that the right thing to do? Should we yes. have let it fall yes, it apart? Was. I don't know. No. I mean, ending slavery. I don't mean that. I mean, keeping us all together, this motley crew of states that fucking hate each other. Was it a good Everybody idea? Everybody was, both the Republicans and the Democrats were mad about, uh, they thought he was, the Eman Emancipation uh, Proclamation, like a Band-Aid. It was too quick. They wanted to do, they wanted to give oh. freedom to the slaves slowly. And oh, right. um, well, they did yeah. in Texas because they didn't notify them till like five years later or something. Juneteenth, so. yes. Yeah. Uh, but he um, also, uh, a lot of people don't remember, did the Homestead Act of 1862, which just accelerated the extermination of the Native Americans. Right. Um, prior to that, it was being done by speculators and big business, so it was uh, doomed anyway. But. It really sped it up that Homestead Act. So, yeah, definitely um, some hits in that guy's presidency and some misses, but not by John Wilkes <laughs> Booth. 
<laughs> right. And, huh? Come on. And Seward also got shot that day. So oh, the wow. vice Johnson was also supposed to get shot that day, too. But the guy who was supposed to shoot Johnson chickened out. Too bad, because Johnson was a real piece of shit, and uh, Alaska right. was known as Seward's Folly. This is the this is the, the few things I remember history podcast, and you seem to be hitting mm -hmm. all the areas. Now, I read <laughs> something today. This is crazy. Um, uh, Abraham Lincoln pardoned uh, this guy named Marcus Robinette who, uh, for attempted murder, right? A Union mm -hmm. soldier. Robinette is the great, great, great grandfather of Joseph Biden. Joe Biden, of course, as we know him. Oh, really? Joe Biden. I think his middle name is Robin, because I remember going, Robin, who does that? Like, it just it seems like such a a, a weird. Waspy. Uh, an, yeah. An, uh, yes, an unusual middle name for uh, Irish Joe. But uh, if it came from Robinette, then that makes sense. But uh, anyway. Right. That's what I thought you were going to say. That, oh, that, that is a fun fact. That's, um, let's take a quick break before we okay. get back to our history podcast. <laughs> And we're back. Um, how was your weekend? Well, it was a fun. week of I, doing stand-up comedy. Uh, yeah. Uh, quick. Uh, oh my God, though, I flew. Okay, I flew into Phoenix, of course, Sky Harbor Airport. What a unnecessarily delayed airport. Every single time I'm there, <laughs> something's going down. That it's like, could you guys do this at one a.m. instead of right now? It took. <laughs> About an hour to drive to Glendale in an Uber, and the guy was so unfriendly and hostile. Um, it was really strange. Wow. Uh, but also, I noticed, oh, you know, like 20 years ago, I would have been trying to ingratiate myself and make sure everything's okay. And now I'm just yeah. like, all right, well, I can be a dick too, asshole. I'll be, I'll be as uh, annoy, you know, as as hostile as you right. are. Um, I did tip, but less than I would have had he just been 1% friendly, but he, he just gave so off real like, you're still an adult human woman. I still yes. tipped. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, you know, he was, uh, I'm not saying you don't have to be, I don't want overly friendly, but to be hostile, like to stare at suitcases and I'm, I'm like, okay, I'll put them in myself, but whatever, that's fine. Just, it was just like, it just felt like. And then I, I'm yeah. always like, is this because I'm wearing a mask? Like, is it is it one of those right. hostels? Yeah. Yeah, every right. once in a while, is it because of that? But sometimes um, it is. Yeah. So I got there, got to the hotel. I didn't even have time to shower. Curled my dirty hair and then went to the club and was so exhausted on stage. I was like eating words, like tripping Punchy. over words because I was so tired. <sighs> and um, but then Saturday, I you know it's these these road gigs are just turning into me uh just sitting in bed all day, you know, working on video. That's all I did in Detroit. Right. I didn't see a fucking thing, you know. I it right. used to be where you go to a museum or something, but now I'm like I have time where I'm uninterrupted. I don't have to walk anything. I don't have to service yep. anything. I'll just bang out a bunch of these things and not have them building up in the back of my mind as I get home with 15 Do you hours have some in the can? Um, I will. As soon as I, we finish this podcast, I'll have the, the Friday first show in the can. And then the Saturday okay. show is like bananas. Like the Saturday show is going to take hours to the first show. There's It was very full and very like bubbly and little things percolating every okay. table. So whatever. It just huh. it, it just takes a lot of time. Also, it's a thing where I don't I don't feel like I can farm it out. I mean, I couldn't wouldn't pay to do it now anyway. For, but say I was making a ton of money, um, maybe I could pay someone just to take the jokes out and just give me, and then I could go through with that. I don't know. But it's right now. It yeah. feels like very specific to me and me combining little bits. It it. I, I what yeah. I'm learning is no one edits your shit the way you want it edited. You know what I mean? Like through that, there that are... is so true. And the fact that you're willing to do it is amazing. Because I pay somebody to pull out ten clips of Dork Forest. Yeah, and we pay Virginia to pull out six clips of Jack and Laurie. Yeah, and just so just so that there's clips. And but I do think here's what here's my quick question about when you when you watch the show initially. Do you mm -hmm. log time code? No, I, I or do you actually it, clip as you go? I open it in iMovie. I clip as I go. Um, I I try to do if I the closer I do it to when I actually perform the show, the more I'll remember. Oh, I did this whole chunk without 
interrupting it so I can just fast forward three minutes and get rid of this chunk. You know what I mean? Sometimes I interrupt a chunk yeah. or I, I'll be interrupted is what right. more that what happens and then I'll go off in that direction. So, but yeah, I do it. I, I do not keep, it's so much to, that's so much writing. Like I, it's weird. You just learn how you work, you know, to me, writing it down yeah. would be a great idea, but I just go in and take out and then I rename the file. Like I'll start with an hour and I movie smash it down to like 10 minutes and then rename it, you know, Friday okay. first show selects. That's what we used to call it on tough crowd actually selects, right? You nice. Selects, right. And now I have that saved on my iMovie and I can go back to it in two weeks and go, all right, these are at least the highlights and I can start trimming um, from there. But uh, the fine. Are you doing all. Go ahead. Are you doing all four selects as quick as possible? Uh, Yeah. Yeah. But it takes like an hour and a half per hour long set at least. Right. Per set. So. Yeah. So if you have a, a, just a weekend, four shows yeah. and do you essentially try to go the next, before you turn them into clips, do you do all the selects first? That's my question. No. Uh, okay. No. I, I started doing the Friday late show Saturday morning. I just, I just okay. started doing it then. Yeah. Cause that was the last show I had in my head. Yeah. Even like, yeah, yeah. like, like shows that aren't packed, there's still like funny little clipettes that you can just throw out and people like, you know what I mean? So, yep, sure are. Um, whatever it's, uh, and yep. no one else is going to do this for me. You know, I'm the only one that cares Not without much. money. Yeah. Right. Uh-huh. But you know, I have, I have hundreds and hundreds of hours going back to, I don't know if I want to go through old sets necessarily. I mean, is that, we'll see, but I, you know, yeah, whatever. I, I just, uh, right now it just feels like, okay, I'll give, I'll give this like a year, this attention, a year of my life and see how, what happens. I would love to be where I see a lot of comics. I don't need to be doing theater. Someone's like, Willie Barstain, it just went off, right? It's like that. That's, are you going on the road and then people tell you about who's popping off? That's what I'm hearing all the <laughs> no. time, right? So I'm sitting oh, in the really? green room with, uh, with Greg and Ben. Um, Greg, I can't remember his last name, and Ben Lewis, who I was working with. Greg's the substitute teacher in Phoenix. You may have worked oh, with him in Circus. Yeah, yeah. He works their lives. He's very funny. He's got this big chunk about kids' names. It's, it's like, it's a killer, killer bit. Yeah. Um, but uh, so, so we're just talking about TikTok and Instagram as all comics are now, right? And the green, that's all we talk about is like what's happening. Who's, who's doing I think what? you introduce it into the plot because I, yeah. I, I never talk about that stuff with those guys. Yeah, but you're, but you are mostly working with, you're working with Maria a lot, right? So, or, I'm just like well, I'm just working with with MC features that okay. are in towns, right? Well, I guess I'm introducing it, but either way, it's like so. So I you keep who, hearing but... about amazing comics, yeah, yeah. But we we were talking now about how it's now it's like good comics, like comics, not not people that started on TikTok and then went into stand up, which is who mm-hmm. who knows what the path is anymore, whatever it is. But it's nice to hear right. of whatever. like old established comics. Also, like Greg Rogel. Do you know Greg Rogel? Well, I know that name. I know I've met He's him. He's a New York guy. Yeah. He's really funny. And um, I don't think he likes me. But for the duration, that guy. Yeah. yeah. Great joke, short joke writer. And apparently he sounds like, oh, he popped off. I'm like, good. Just off of jokes, you know? And Willie Barsena, okay. I didn't, I would, I would I guess Willie Barsani came in my head a while ago. I'm like, where's that guy? I hope he's doing okay. You know, I just Ch- met him a couple Chicago times. I really guy? like him. No, he's, um, I think he's LA. He, I think he started in LA. He might, but he's, uh, he's Latino. Oh. I don't know if he's from Texas, but he's like, he's, he's been around. He's like our age. He's been doing it a long time. Right. And had yep. like, he had yep. some pushes and then things didn't, come, you know, like we all do in our, whatever our career at this point, you're like, you're like, Oh, is it going to happen? Oh, okay. And, um, he, uh, then someone says, Oh, he's filling theaters. And I was looking at his, um, his TikTok, and, uh, I am like, Oh, I totally get it. Like it, it's, it's just, it's a ton of jokes, you know, in his wheelhouse. Yeah. Right. And I could see how you're just like, this guy is so, He's he's kind of like your your uncle. He's kind of got that vibe. Your kind of dirty uncle, in a right, in a right. nice way. 
anyway, good for him is oh, good. what I'm saying. And then it's like, maybe yep. there's hope for me, for you, although you're popping sure. off already. But like, we just want to fill the rooms that we're working, you know? Yeah. I don't think I don't think I'm popping off. I but uh, maybe I'm pop. Am I popping? If I pop it off, you thank you. Had, you. I'd you like had, to thank uh, my parents. No, you um, said you had uh, eight. Oh, the ones that kept you in the cold. You had eight million views on that one clip, right? That's I mean right, that I might have, like start... seven and a half million views on that one that That's one clip. Insane. That's um, insane. And I will say, since I got verified, I've uh, something like thirty thousand new followers. Wow. But a lot of them seem to be like I spend a fair amount of time uh, blocking Russian bots. How do you know they're and Russian bots? And a couple bots? of guys who are interested in this. And you're like, <laughs> nope. You, Jackie, not. it's none of your business why they come to your show as long as they bought a ticket. <laughs> and a T-shirt and a hat. Thank yes. you very much. Um, I will say that... Um, I don't, yeah, I, I've been, I posted a clip that was made for me by that guy who clips, I send him hours and he, yeah. and he, and he clips out hours and he tightens up my act like a, like a motherfucker. He <laughs> nails it. Do you, uh, do you I just absorb post- his edits into your act? Like if he's, if he's cutting out. I wish I did. It- okay. I, I want to, like, I literally, I want to write down how he, cause what he did is he took my American bit. About going to see the Declaration of Independence. Yeah, he tightened that. He made that nice, didn't he? Yes, yes, it's great. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> it's great. All he's got to do is is the other twelve minutes of that bit could then also be another, essentially like he's taking three minute chunks and making them into a minute, forty five seconds. Yeah. So it's kind That's- of amazing. It is amazing. Like, however, I mean, that's, that's, it it is something of Instagramming your act, right? But when you're on stage, you are taking in the energy of the audience and the pacing of the audience as well. So when you are performing, you can't necessarily do that chop version because that's not, that's not going to work with this giant audience. If you have a big room, you have to slow down. If you, you know, like it's a different energy when you're live. So it, it is weird how, like, I've been cutting, I've been trying to edit things down to a minute from my special little jokes. And I'm like, why did I leave that in? Why did, why didn't I say that faster? But I'm like, yeah, but it, it didn't feel slow when I was on stage because I had an audience that's right in front of me and I'm moving, we're all moving in uh, together, you know? Right. Somebody saw me in Philadelphia and they said, I liked all the different places that you went with that joke. And, um, because this is just one place that I've gone with it. Yeah. And that the kitten line, that's the only time I've ever done that line. Oh, really? <laughs> About, yeah, or the starfish line or whatever. Um, and I don't know that I could, uh, it was hard for me to do it with a straight face that night. Yeah. I just didn't have another place to go with to end it. And yeah. so I said that. And there's there's a better punchline there. I just don't have it yet. But well, I, I like Trey didn't you know st- that. <laughs> I like how you set it up as just these are some lines I have for this bit I'm working on. So, yeah. you know, you set it up as this is not finished, but here's where I'm going. And it's like, oh, this is really interesting. I want to see, like, now I'm kind of like invested, and I'm sure other people are, how, how it ends. Like, how, where you go with yeah, it. Yeah, I'm you hoping. Know? Yeah, I'm hoping that that does help. Um, I'm doing a don't tell this week, and I saw somebody else told. And so I wait, what? I'm like, go sign up for what? Somebody else told, what do you mean? Were you not supposed right, to say they, anything? They didn't not tell. They told. Like they, yeah. they made a, a, a thing for their Instagram that said, the headliner that you may see in Bloomington this week has been on these programs. And it was on their Instagram. Hmm. What was our, is, so, are you supposed to not tell if you're doing a don't tell? I don't know. I don't, I don't I, know. I don't know if you can plug it to get people to come. Oh. Or if they're just going to sell it out anyway. But I, uh, I did, I just sent out a, a, um, a big, uh, email blast. Oh, nice. And, um, I told. 
Jackie, you know I'm what? Saying. No one, no one complains if there's audience. I mean, it's. I right. think it's fine. I think it's right. just, that's just their cool name. There's a lot of secret show, and you know, there for some reason uh, that is appealing to I think millennials. For you know, like that the 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 speakeasy idea of stand up comedy. Like they're not at their right. father's funny bone or something. I don't know. <laughs> I would love to headline your dad's right. funny bone, by the way. So keep me in mind. <laughs> my dad came and saw me one time at Zany's in dad, Chicago sorry. downtown. Yes. Mm-hmm. Not my dad, just any yeah. dad. Yes. Uh, but he came and saw me and he was psyched about it because you come in, if you're late, you come in through the kitchen like it's good fellas. <laughs> right. Which is his his favorite thing. Yeah. And then... um it's so a two drink minimum. He told me after the show that he tried to order mulled wine. I was like, sometimes I don't like you. What's what's mulled wine? Well, that's it. It's not available at a downtown Zany's in two in two thousand and one. How about that? Okay, because of nine so, eleven. Uh, <laughs> no, because. No. <laughs> See, see, Jackie and Lori fans, this is why you need to see Lori live is because this she'll just hear something. And then all of a sudden she'll say, you are the last person. You two are the last two people to still be listening to morning radio. And you guys should get together between 7 and 10 a.m. It was a knee slapper is what I'm saying. I slapped my knee. Um, hey, let's take another break. Oh, did we do Comic of the Week yet? I think we forgot, right? We didn't. Oh, so let's do it after this break. All right. Let's do it. Uh, Isabel, whose name I have completely spaced. What is it? Hagen. Hagen. How are you spelling Hagen? Okay. H- yeah. All right. Well, Isabella Hagen made me laugh so hard, and it just came up in reels. I might have met her. I might know her. We might have had comedy brunch together. How could we know? But I'll tell you this much about Isabella Hagen. She plays the viola, and she, it's a clip of her doing stand-up in between playing a beautiful riff on a viola. <laughs> you know what I love? And so it made me laugh so yeah, hard. Yeah, I mean, the jokes are really was, good. Like, Dimitri used to do, you know... Like he used to play the piano, right? And then do a joke and stuff. I, what I'm saying is I think a lot of comics have like played average piano and then told jokes right. and no one complained. Right. But here you have an actual virtuoso, like a really beautiful musician playing a very tiny, and it's not a piano. So it's not like this big thing. Like that is a mobile, you can take that to any stage. And right. when she plays, it's beautiful. And then the joke is like short and mean. I mean, I love it. It's great. <laughs> right. It was literally short and mean. Yeah. And, but it had pulled me, I had forgotten that she was a comic. Right. Because the, because the yeah. riff that she had done was so beautiful. Yeah. And then she told the, a very funny, very dark joke. And I was, I was like, Oh, I would like more of both of those things. Thank you very much, Isabel. I know. Every time these guys, and I don't mean to say guys, but these people that are almost always guys pull out an acoustic guitar, <laughs> I'm like, that, you're playing four notes. And I could learn to do that in a day and a half, but I could not learn to do what Isabella does with that violin in a lifetime and a half. Like, she's great. Right. Right. She freaking nailed it. So Isabella Hagen. And H A G A N, you said, Kyle? And that's her handle, right? Ooh, underscore at the end of it. Yeah. There must be another. She, she needs space. So everyone give her her space. <laughs> <laughs> she incorporated it into her handle. Um, so, what are you doing this week? This week, I am in Los Angeles doing spots here and there. Um, and uh, I'm doing Totally tonight at Bar Lubitsch on this Wednesday night. And then uh, Thursday, oh, cool. 
I'm doing uh, Big Naturals with uh, with Kim McVicker has a show at the Improv Club. She goes, it's called Big Naturals, but I didn't name it. I'm like, that's fine. I don't care. I don't I don't care about show right. names anymore. Just put me on the lineup. You are now a medium unnatural. <laughs> I am. They're so tiny. I love it. I still love it. Oh, yeah. But here's the big thing is I'm going to be in Chicago at the Lincoln Lodge on March 20th. You can get tickets on my website, LoriKilmartin.com. Okay. If you're in Chicago, you got to come to the show, please. Uh, I'm paying for everything myself because I'm I'm using that to uh, get into the Midwest a day early so that I can drive to Ann Arbor and not not fly in and do a show immediately. All right. So let's all and you're show doing up. the Lincoln Lodge? Do the Lincoln Lodge on Wednesday, the the uh twentieth of March. It'll be okay. good. It'll be a fun show. With some local openers. And then uh on March fourteenth, I'm in DC doing improbable improbable comedy. You did it as well. At oh yeah. Silver Springs, I think. So if you're in that area, yeah. that's the only time I will be there because the DC lock right. has no use for me. So I'm excited. So come on, uh, come on over to improbable tickets also available on my website. That's awesome. I, this week I'm going to do a guesty at uh, comedy on state. Shang Wang said I could do a guest set. Oh, nice. Uh, on Thursday. He's so great. He's I'm looking great. forward to just watching his long, He's long so set. Funny. Yes. So funny. I just and did then, a, I, um, oh, yeah. that's, Go ahead. No, I just did a show with him. Did you just work Daly with him? Had a show to benefit his kid's school, and Shang was on it, and he's he was so funny. He's great. I love him. Oh, and, it's just it's just yeah. effortless. It's just as it's quite honestly, it's like it's like is what well, it's great to watch. Yeah. Um, and that's Thursday, and then Friday I'm gonna do um, the secret show. It's a don't tell in Chicago on the hmm. West Side, I believe. Hmm. You can go to don't tell Uh You can also sign up for my email list and you'll find out about like secret zoom shows and you know, a bunch of other nonsense. So that's on Jackie But then on Saturday I fly to New York and I have four sets at the stand that night. Nice. And then like 10 or 11 sets over the week at the stand. And then I'm also doing, I'm doing a uh, a debate show with Mike Kaplan. Oh, uh, good luck. It's something called the symposium. Right. And uh that's during the week and and then I'm I'm and then I, I but I'm going to be in New York for 8 days. And then I go come home for one day to open for Maria at Irvine Improv. And then that Monday, I drive to Las Vegas to do the Comedy Cellar. And I'm hoping to get some Comedy Cellar spots because that was supposedly why I was doing the Comedy Cellar. In Vegas? But it turns out I'm doing the Comedy Cellar anyway. <laughs> so, Well, yeah, I would, uh, I would think so. I, I mm-hmm. should. Mm-hmm. I, all I know is I, she said, I haven't seen you in a long time. What are you doing? And I sent her my cordon and I never heard back. And uh, I'm like, the cordon's six minutes of me killing. I'm good for the other 14. Never heard that. Right. It'll be, it'll be fine. Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. It'll be fine. Me not getting work I'm sure is it'll... not fine ever, Jackie. No, it's not fine. But uh, yeah, who knows? I mean, and she's been, she can watch these 15s in Vegas. I know it's so because terrifying. I think that they just live stream them. They have a video into the bar. Yeah, they have a video village where they can yeah. check if you snap. You know, here's what I believe: every comedian deserves to snap on stage in Las Vegas without being seen by anyone but the <laughs> audience that drove them to that reaction. That's what I think. Right, right. I um, I don't know. Um, I know that Mark talks to her the guy the 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 host mm-hmm. the the house mc yeah he talks to her like three or four times a week i guess and um she could watch every one of his sets if she wanted to yeah i can't imagine she'd want to at this i mean there she has also five rooms in the village right i know and i think they're filming all of them i know <laughs> so i know I mean, I think I've got video problems. That's a lot of video to watch. Right. 
Joelle told me that she is part of this Valley, the Valley Village business. She does that. Oh. And it pays like, uh, it pays a little bit of money and it's mean, fine. What do you mean the Valley pers- Village business? There's like a, there's like a, um, a live, it's not a live feed. It's an actual, it's, well, it's like a Zoom show. It's is a scheduled it, Zoom it, show that people buy tickets for. It's is it Mint? Is it? Uh, I've seen the seller push video out on Twitter as under it called Mint TV or something like that. But they'll be like, it might be. They'll be like three people are watching, and I'm like, that can't be gratifying, or that can't pay, right? Or is it just people on Twitter watching? Does it? It matter? pays. Well, I mean, does I don't it pay? think it matters because I think that they that they know. bank it too. Yeah, I don't know. Just think of all the hours of stand-up comedy that have been banked. Oh my god! And this, this world is doomed. Like, here's the good news: Acme throws it away. Ooh. <laughs> so, uh, I and I honestly appreciate that. Um, yeah, Acme. Though I do kind of wish. Yeah. Go ahead. No, Acme and oh, and the punchline in Sacramento gave me a ton of video too, and it's different. I think I, I was downloading it earlier, so I haven't looked at it, but it looks like it's lots of cam- camera angles. And I'm also when there's too many camera angles, I'm like, I I I don't know. It's definitely iMovie doesn't know what to do with multiple angles. It iMovie's <laughs> like, what the fuck? Straight on, bitch. That's it. Uh, it, I, it. I can become more intimidated by grabbing clips because there's so many. I'm like, should I, how do I, should I use this other angle and, you know, whatever. Right. Right. Um, I just saw my sister-in-law put her very elderly dog in a baby basket and she's going to walk. They live in the woods. Russ, Russ currently lives in not a particle board. Uh, room. He lives in a very nice house. And um, he he's Winnie the Pooh is what he is. He lives in the Hundred Acre Wood. Wow. And uh, she's pushing it to the to the um to the end of the road. And it's got to be a half a mile each way or a quarter mile each way. So. Wow. So and the you dog's got to weigh 30 or 40 pounds. They're not worried about serial so. killers that live in the woods? No. No. If they were worried about serial killers um They used to have so much, so many walnut trees, and my brother planted them as a joke. He was like, "It's generational wealth," (laughs) Uh, because three, three generations from now, uh, because walnut is incredibly (laughs) expensive. Oh, I didn't know that. But I think he's, I think he had a bunch of them cut down to make room for something, and uh, and sold the wood early, early cash cow, Mm. early cash cow. God knows. Um, well, I, I would like to grow a pomegranate tree. I have become so good at eating pomegranates without creating a mess that uh, really? it should be a profession of mine. I should be able to enter a contest. It is. A, um, maybe it's a side hustle. Uh, <laughs> I love pomegranates and I only buy one a year because my uh, I, I'm not good at opening them up. What if that was my only fans? <laughs> uh, I, i'm telling you that would go i think some that would people go. would pay for that and guess I'm what almost i almost certain they would. I would charge more to do it messy so there's like <laughs> juice all over my face and my bra <laughs> I'm tattoo t- tramp stamp. I'm j- I'm just saying. I'm writing that down and I'm writing down my my palm idea. Jackie, I just need multiple streams of income at this point in my life because one stream right? a single stream isn't covering any of my expenses. Right, revenue streams not cutting it. Um yeah, any minute now, I'm hoping to I'm hoping my sound exchange isn't disappointing this this month is oh what I'm really God. hoping. It takes but I don't know what's going to happen. Well, um, I will say, say it this: takes a couple months from when they start doing something, but oh, for sure. <clears throat> yeah. When I think of how much you and I at the both at the same time were counting on that money, especially me. Yeah. <laughs> you seem to you seem to be yeah. like, well, there'll always be more money. I don't I don't understand that line of thinking at all. 
Uh, so I was because there has to be Lori because there has to be. <laughs> you got to have the attitude because you the other attitude isn't going to make you do anything except for get an ulcer. I forgot to say that. So I'm spending a week in Las Vegas, the fourth through the tenth. Yeah. Of March, mm -hmm. I'm going back on the 29th and 30th, or to open for Brian Regan. I think it's the first time he's playing Las Vegas. Really? Wait, he lives there, right? He lives there, but he's never wanted to essentially play where he lives. Which means he might be interested in uh, some sort of conservancy or or what uh, you know where. Uh, residency or yeah whatever. residency not a or a conservatorship either way that <laughs> one will result from a residency in vegas that's for sure <laughs> um i have to go take my dad for ice cream yeah